Trump News Nikki Haley worried Trump won't follow Constitution, while appearing on Sunday morning's NBC's Meet the Press, Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley expressed uncertainty over whether or not former President Donald Trump will adhere to the United States Constitution if re-elected, Haley hesitated before responding, I don't know, to host Kristen Welker's question on whether she thinks Trump would obey the Constitution if re-elected. One would hope that someone would, but in reality, one can never be sure. When you speak about seeking vengeance or seeking vindication, what exactly does it imply? He alone is responsible for that, in my view, it is absolutely unacceptable for a president to be exempt from accountability or granted complete freedom to act in any way they see fit, she declared. We must choose a role model for our children that they can admire and be proud of. On Sunday morning, Newsweek emailed the Trump campaign in an effort to get a response. Feel free to contribute statements and we will incorporate them into this story. As new information becomes available, we will update this article, since she took up an electoral fraud lawsuit against Donald Trump, Fonnie Willis, the district attorney of Fulton County, Georgia, has disclosed some of the racist hate mail she has received. As the Republican nominee for president, the ex president has claimed that the 13 allegations against him are politically motivated, and he has pled not. Guilty to all of them, Judge Scott McAfee was shown an example of hate mail that had a graphic of Willis's face next to a gallows and the words, I'm past the point of wanting them in prison. On the other hand, the lined paper page has a lot of racist language and uses the N-word a lot. It will be entertaining to witness Trump's treatment of you, crap, after he takes office, it concludes. The end of slavery, and the handwritten letter, Willis makes sexually suggestive comments about her past relationship with Trump case prosecutor Nathan Wade and implies that she pretended to cry while defending Wade in January at Big Bethel AME Church in Georgia. T appears that her office has received all of the submitted pages and her court submission. She fails to specify when or if all of the threats originated from the same person. A sample of correspondence received by DA Willis is what it calls them, among other nasty things, one page reads, you are responsible for meddling in the election. Take a look at that clan. Clear out, for reaction, Newsweek contacted Willis and Trump's lawyer via email on Sunday, recently. The hate mail that Willis's office sent to McAfee in February became public knowledge. In order to refute the assertions made by Trump's legal team, who claimed that Willis had indicted Trump only for the purpose of obtaining favorable press, Wade, Willis, and other attorneys from Willis's office signed it. Willis argues that this allegation fails to take into account the fact that District Attorney Willis has received both favorable and bad attention about this case. This attention includes threats to his personal safety, racist insults, sexual harassment, and physical assaults. These expenditures are so evident and hard to deny that they must be considered in any fair assessment of the prosecutor's advantage, the document states. It is important to note that District Attorney Willis did not seek out this case, despite the baseless accusations of seeking notoriety. The 2020 Georgia election was the focal point of these defendants' racketeering plot. It continues, Michael Roman, a former Trump staffer and co-defendant, accused Willis of having an affair with Wade, the special prosecutor she had engaged for the case. Willis testified during a two-day hearing in February in response to these allegations.